with so much of our personal data flowing through the internet today, it has become imperative that we secure it from prying eyes. We have taken a look at how encryption works and its importance in today's world. If you haven't seen that video yet, we recommend giving it a view before moving further, the link of which you can find in the description. In our last video, we saw how the data encryption standard, also known as DES, became the global standard for encryption and data security. Eventually, with so much computing power growth, the need for a stronger algorithm was necessary to safeguard our personal data. As solid as DES was, the computers of today could easily break the encryption with repeated attempts, thereby rendering the data security helpless. To counter this dilemma, a new standard was introduced which was termed as the Advanced Encryption Standard or the AES algorithm. Let us see what are the topics we are hoping to cover today. We take a look at what is the Advanced Encryption Algorithm and the origin. We learn about the features of AES and the multiple steps that comprise the working of this algorithm. Finally, we go through the applications of the Advanced Encryption Standard and differences between the current and past global standard for data security, that is the DES algorithm. Let's learn what is Advanced Encryption Standard. The AES algorithm, also known as the Rindal algorithm, is a symmetric block cipher with a block size of 128 bits. It is converted into cipher text using keys of 128, 192 or 256 bits. It is implemented in software and hardware throughout the world to encrypt sensitive data. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, also known as NIST, started development on AES in 1997 when it was announced the need for an alternative to the data encryption standard. The new internet needed a replacement for DES because of its small key size. With increasing computing power, it was considered unsafe against entire key search attacks. The triple DES was designed to overcome this problem. However, it was deemed to be too slow to be deployed in machines worldwide. Strong cases were present by the Mars, RC6, Serpent and the Two-Fish algorithms but it was the Rindal encryption algorithm, also known as AES, which was eventually chosen as the standard symmetric key encryption algorithm to be used. Its selection was formalized with the release of Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 197 in the November of 2001. It was approved by the US Secretary of Commerce. Now that we understand the origin of AES, let us have a look at the features that make AES encryption algorithm unique. The AES algorithm uses a substitution permutation or SP network. It consists of multiple rounds to produce a ciphertext. It has a series of linked operations including replacing inputs with specific outputs that is substitutions and others that involve bit shuffling which is permutations. At the beginning of the encryption process we only start out with a single key which can be either a 128 bit key, a 192 bit key or a 256 bit key. Eventually, this one key is expanded to be used in multiple rounds throughout the encryption and the decryption cycle. Interestingly, AES performs all its calculations on byte data instead of bit data as seen in the case of the DES algorithm. Therefore, AES treats 128 bits of a clear text block as 16 bytes. The number of rounds during the encryption process depends on the key size that is being used. The 128-bit key size fixes 10 rounds the 192-bit key size fixes 12 rounds and the 256-bit key holds 14 rounds. A round key is required for each of these rounds but since only one key is input into the algorithm, the single key needs to be expanded to get the key for each round including the round 0. With so many mathematical calculations going on in the background, there are bound to be a lot of steps throughout the procedure. Let's have a look at the steps followed in AES. Before we move ahead, we need to understand how data is being stored during the process of AES encryption. Everything in the process is stored in a 4 into 4 matrix format. This matrix is also known as a state array and we'll be using these state arrays to transmit data from one step to another and from one round to the next round. Each round takes state array as input and gives a state array as output to be transferred into the next round. It is a 16 byte matrix with each cell representing one byte with each four bytes representing a word. 
So every state array will have a total of four words representing it. As we previously discussed, we take a single key and expand it to the number of rounds that we need the key to be used in. Let's say the number of rounds are n, then the key has to be expanded to be used with n plus 1 rounds because the first round is the key 0 round. Let's say n is the number of rounds, the key is expanded to n plus 1 rounds. It is also a state array having 4 words in its vicinity. Every key is used for a single round and the first key is used as a round key before any round begins. In the very beginning, the plain text is captured and passed through an XOR function with a round key as a supplement. This key can be considered the first key from the n plus 1 expanded set. Moving on, the state array resulting from the above step is passed on to a byte substitution process. Beyond that, there is a provision to shift rows in the state arrays. Later on, the state array is mixed with a constant matrix to shuffle its column in the mix column segment, after which we add the round key for that particular round. The last four steps mentioned are part of every single round that the encryption algorithm goes through. The state arrays are then passed from one round to the next as an input. In the last round, however, we skip the mix columns portion with the rest of the process remaining unchanged. But what are these byte substitution and row shifting processes? Let's find out regarding each step in more detail. In the first step, the plain text is stored in a state array and it is XORed with the K0, which is the first key in the expanded key set. This step is performed only once on a block while being repeated at the end of each round as per iteration demands. The state array is XORed with the key to get a new state array, which is then passed off as input to the sub bytes process. In the second stage, we have byte substitution. We leverage an X box called as a substitution box to randomly switch data among each element. Every single byte is converted into a hexadecimal value having two parts. The first part denotes the row value and the second part denotes the column value. The entire state array is passed through the S box to create a brand new state array which is then passed off as an input to the row shifting process. The 16 input bytes are replaced by looking at a fixed table given in the design. We finally get a matrix with 4 rows and 4 columns. When it comes to row shifting, each bit in the 4 rows of the matrix is shifted to the left. An entry that is a fall off is reinserted to the right of the line. The change is done as follows. The first line is not moved in any way. The second line is shifted to a single position to the left. The third line is shifted two positions to the left. And the fourth line is shifted three positions to the left. The result is a new matrix that contains the same 16 bytes but has been moved in relation to each other to boost the complexity of the program. In mixed columns, each column of 4 bytes is now replaced using a special mathematical function. The function takes 4 bytes of a column as input and outputs 4 completely new bytes. We will get a new matrix with the same size of 16 bytes and it should be noted that this phase has not been done in the last round of the iteration. When it comes to adding a round key, the 16 bytes of the matrix are treated as 128 bits and the 128 bits of the round key are XOR. If it is the last round, the output is the ciphertext. If you still have a few rounds remaining, the resulting 128 bits are interpreted as 16 bytes and we start another similar round. Let's take an example to understand how all these processes work. If our plain text is the string 2192, we first convert it into a hexadecimal format as follows. We use an encryption key which is that's my kung fu and it is converted into a hexadecimal format as well. As per the guidelines, we use a single key which is then later expanded into n plus 1 number of keys in which case it's supposed to be 11 keys for 10 different rounds. In round 0, we add the round key. The plain test is XORed with the K0 and we get a state array that is passed off as an input to the substitution bytes process. 
When it comes to the substitution bytes process, we leverage an S box to substitute the elements of each byte with a completely new byte. This way the state array that we receive is passed off as an input to the row shifting process on the next step. When it comes to row shifting, each element is shifted a few places to the left with the first row being shifted by 0 places, second row by 1 place, third row by 2 places and the last by 3. The state array that we received from the row shifting is passed off as an input to mix columns. In mix columns, we multiply the state array with a constant matrix after which I receive a new state array to be passed on onto the next step. We add the new state array as an XOR with the round key of the particular iteration. Whatever state array we receive here, it becomes an output for this particular round. Now since this is the first round of the entire encryption process, the state array that we receive is passed off as an input to the new round. We repeat this process for 10 more rounds and we finally receive a ciphertext. Once the final state array can be denoted in the hexadecimal format, this becomes our final ciphertext that we can use for transferring information from the sender and receiver. Let's take a look at the applications of AES in this world. AES finds most use in the area of wireless security in order to establish a secure mode of authentication between routers and clients. Highly secure mechanisms like WPA and WPA2 PSK are extensively used in securing Wi-Fi endpoints with the help of Rindile's algorithm. It also helps in SSL TLS encryption that is instrumental in encrypting our internet browser sessions. AES works in tandem with other asymmetric encryption algorithms to make sure the web browser and web server are properly configured and use encrypted channels for communication. AES is also prevalent in general file encryption of various formats ranging from protocol documents to the media files. Having a large key allows people to encrypt media and decrypt data with maximum security possible. AES is also used for processor security in hardware appliances to prevent machine hijacking among other things. As a direct successor to the DES algorithm, there are some aspects that AES provides an immediate advantage in. Let us take a look. When it comes to key length, the biggest flaw in DES algorithm was its small length was easily vulnerable by today's standards. AES has managed to nab up 128, 192 and 256 bit key lengths to bolster the security further. The block size is also larger in AES owing to more complexity of the algorithm. The number of rounds in DES is fixed irrespective of the plain text being used. In AES, the number of rounds depends on the key length that is being used for the particular iteration, thereby providing more randomness and complexity in the algorithm. The DES algorithm is considered to be simpler than AES, even though AES beats DES when it comes to relative speed of encryption and decryption. This makes advanced encryption standard much more streamlined to be deployed in frameworks and systems worldwide when it compares to the data encryption standard. Hope you all learned something interesting today. Feel free to ask us in the comment section if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.